So like everybody else, daily exercise has given us the chance to explore parts of our hometowns and cities that we've never seen before and get off the beaten track. But what I didn't expect to find was a string of Cold War bunkers. And in this vlog, I'm off to find out just why they're here. Now, they've been around us for years and years, and chances are there isn't one far from you. But I, like loads of other people, had no idea this one secret underground nuclear monitoring post existed almost in plain sight. These underground structures were used by hundreds of Royal Observer Corps volunteers from the late 1950s, before later being declassified and abandoned as late as the early 90s. It was thanks to the Cold War tensions and a very real threat to the UK that we built over 1,500 of these bunkers right across the country, normally between 8 and 10 miles apart and formed in clusters, which would then provide vital information back to a regional headquarters. Attack warning red. Attack warning red. Attack warning red. That threat was made even more realistic in the 1984 apocalyptic war drama called Threads, which gave a dramatic account of a nuclear war and its effects on the city of Sheffield. Now, you can normally find a bunker by its identifiable concrete hatch and nearby phone line in fairly rural areas, but most, like this one, have been filled in due to flooding or vandalism, but some, on common land, well, they do remain open. Now, above ground, the 1,500 or so bunkers would have one of those, an air ventilation shaft to give clean, fresh air to the bunker below. A fixed survey meter. Now, this would have held a probe on top to, again, supply the guys below information on what was happening outside. And just below it, a bomb pressure indicator. Now, it's missing a top. Would have had sort of two discs held together, and that would have supplied information as to the pressure of the bomb going off above ground. And then finally, the main hatch itself. Obviously the hatch door, which takes you down to the bunker below, but it would also house one of these, a circular pinhole camera. Its job, with specialist paper inside, would be to detect any bomb bursts above ground. So let's head 16 feet down inside the bunker. And it's a long way down. So this is the hand pump and basically any water that would gather down here in the sun, you'd crank this by hand and it would pump all the water right back up to the top. Now inside the bunker at the bottom of the ladder you'll find two rooms. So straight in front of us uh, that was the chemical toilet room so uh, not very much in terms of privacy. And this is the main observation room and here you'd have three people at work. Uh, the metal sort of box in the middle would be the desk. On there you'd have a teletalk system to talk to HQ and uh, basically update them with information. And on the back wall you'd have the bunk bed. While two people slept, uh, one person would tend to work. And from what I understand, the power came from a 12 volt battery charged by a generator above ground and then supplying the lighting down inside the bunker. On the roof, that's where the probe went, and that supplied information on the bombing above ground, so the device would be up against the wall, and that would measure the pressure of a bomb going off above ground. Now, this on the wall is a speaker system, which I believe gave updates from the government when an attack in this area was imminent. And if that happened, then they would have to race up to the top, sound the alarm, and then close the air vent and make sure it was completely shut to avoid any nuclear fallout. Thankfully, the call never came, and in 1991, this bunker, like many others, was shut as technology had moved on, and the same tasks could now be carried out by satellite. But it does make you wonder what secretive buildings lie beneath our very feet today. Oh. 
Well, that is pretty cool. <laughs>